Hey everybody, this is Rido. We are back to another live stream of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, October 11th, and we are playing Hearthstone. Uh, I wonder if I could convince anybody to help me, actually, because I need to get Paladin and Warrior victories done, ideally, and I don't think... I'm going to be able to do that. I guess I should play on casual. Uh, but friendly play would be nice. If it, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Not a big deal. I'll just play the Asian and European accounts off screen. Uh, probably at, at this point I'm spending a little bit more time than necessary playing off screen. Uh, I was... To, to, covering the news, there's still a small amount of that. Uh, and then Darian yeah. was asking There's me about my experience of PSAT. I, uh, I don't believe I actually did take a PSAT, but I told him the story of, of me taking the SAT twice, nearly perfecting it, and then not going to college for several years after getting nearly a perfect score on the SAT that I didn't care about and then talking about how I went to college for a couple weeks decided it wasn't for me and dropped out and ran like the plague uh, the legions I command. all are pretty funny stories uh, in my part I don't tell them very often because they kind of they're kind of personal stories too and they don't have too much to do with video games Let's see. Oh, I guess I should try and bring back the Hearthstone deck tracker that crashed. Yeah, let's see. Uh, can we play anything right now? Not, not particularly. I, wonder. I could do this and this, but I don't think that's worth it. Uh, so, let's... While we're waiting to see if anybody else wants has any questions or comments on the chat let's get back to the news uh final fantasy 14 we already talked about it, it adds a final fantasy 12 themed raid uh which okay like i don't know what that really means to anybody people that like to play final fantasy 14 which is the online one are probably getting more content like world of warcraft it's it's almost the exact same thing as like I don't report on every update on World of Warcraft because uh, because either you're on board with that or you aren't. Hmm. Let's see. If we do this, that won't work. Yeah, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to do this instead and that. Hmm. Moving on with the news, apparently Hajime Tabata, who is, um, who who is working on Final Fantasy XV, which I don't believe is is the most current one, has said that making Final Fantasy XV for PC is a hundred times easier than the console version. Uh, and that they're trying to tweak the game so that lower spec PCs can handle it. Now, in that's good to know here because that means that there will there's more motivation out there to uh, let's see what am I trying to say? There's more motivation probably in the Japanese industry to make games for a PC particularly if it's going to be easier but but for Final Fantasy 15 in particular the problem is that that's just an unfinished game so they can work on it getting it running better fine that's good but they they kind of need that story to be finished uh, I think starting with the next Final Fantasy they need to to realize that the world has kind of changed and we don't need games out there that 
take 120 hours to uh, finish. Uh, Go ahead and kill this one. Hmm. So, yeah, a 30 hour or 60 hour Final Fantasy next time wouldn't be terrible. Particularly if they could just get into a schedule of saying this is act one of a three act trilogy. Uh, or they could announce that later if it succeeds. Hmm. What is this one? Whenever this one deals damage, gain that much armor. Okay. Let's see. Whenever this one takes damage. Hmm. Man, this website is old. Unless that's 2018. I guess that could be 2018. I'm looking at at a pinball festival that's supposed to happen, I think, next year. Hmm. Let's see. A weekend past $45. Hmm. Interesting thought. I'll have to give it some thought. Maybe I can slightly justify in my head going going to more conventions and things just for my own fun. Just so I'm a more rounded video game fan. Uh, not that all video game fan, fans need to to go to conventions or can, but it wouldn't be a terrible idea. Let's see, let's kill this one. Uh, but, yeah, I've thought about going to some conventions. But I, I'm gonna very much have to, to evaluate each convention, evaluate how much it would cost, how far I have to go. How many days off of recording uh, with the Monday, Wednesday, Friday streaming schedule? Uh, there's a good chance that a Friday or a Monday stream or both would be missed because most of the conventions happen on the weekend. I'd like to get more feedback from people who have gone to specific conventions and how fun they are. And what you can really expect from them and what you can't. Like, a lot of it doesn't sound like it would really benefit me if I go to a video game convention and I'm just listening to people who really don't know what they're talking about giving, uh, giving long panels, conferences, or if I'm going to a cosplay conference, I, I, I don't think that really adds anything to a video game convention that I... I could just say, okay, I saw a bunch of people in video game character cosplay. Uh, uh, if I go to a tournament and either watch or interact in a tournament, does that really add anything? It, it's all, all the conventions are kind of just old information. Like, it, it's not even something like Comic Con where there's a likelihood that a new game would get announced. The video game industry has been actually pretty good, maybe horribly bad, depending on your opinion on uh, announcements at conventions uh, about not announcing games or talking about new things. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get this guy to let me win. We'll do a friendly challenge. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, that is something I'm thinking about it. I'd like more feedback in the comments. Like, does making me a more active gamer in the gaming community as far as conventions go really add anything? Or, or does it 
potentially just dilute my opinions into a group think uh, that is also part of the fear uh, moving back to the news uh, the SNES classic apparently outsold the switch during its first week in Japan so that's this article on Game Sutra is already wrong because it would have been the Super Famicom outsells the Switch in Japan because that would have been the only thing that was available. Mm. Uh, so this article is already in its title wrong. I need to do some checking unless unless the SNES Classic has been reverse imported to Japan uh, instead of the Super Famicom and that I guess is a resounding no as far as him being willing to play me um, I don't think we're still in the phase where we can say the switch isn't succeeding in Japan uh, we, we were feeling that for a while but now it's it's much closer to an idea of uh, we are succeeding. It's just uh, the switch is succeeding in Japan. It's just taking a little bit longer than what what it normally would, uh, and it's not not a breakout hit. Whereas I think the Super NES and the Super Famicom probably are breakout hits. If if I saw one and it was just regular price in a store, I would be very tempted to get a Super yeah. NES Classic and a NES Classic. But frankly, I've already got a Raspberry Pi, so who cares? Like Raspberry Pi can do better. And in buying a Raspberry Pi 3 case, the whenever the Raspberry Pi 4 comes out, uh, that you can upgrade for a very cheap price where you're going to pay more likely twice the price. It, it only costs $35 for a Raspberry Pi 3. If the Raspberry Pi 4 comes out in a few years, it's probably not going to be much more than $35 just for the the board itself the plugs will probably be the same the cases will probably still work there's a path to upgrade in the same way that buying a uh, buying a PC case allows you to potentially have four or five different motherboards because the ATX or standard is and has been the standard uh, on mounting PC case uh, motherboards for a very long time and there's really no Let no likelihood see. that that's going to change hmm. let's see Super Mario Odyssey has a new trailer out of live action dancers in New Donk City uh, again Mario is half the height of all the other humans so they're, they're being consistent I would imagine at least in in their weirdness uh, hmm. honestly for the switch as I'm watching this live action trailer the last thing I want to do is play it with those joy cons I, I find that frustratingly a poor poor option so if I were to buy a switch just to play this game I would also have to buy the extra controller that um, that lets you play on it and Mario is in the sombrero hat in this trailer again uh, which people had already accused the game of being uh, cultural appropriation because he's wearing a sombrero hat and a poncho uh, which doesn't really make too much of a sense because you, if you liked Mario ever, he's it, it's always been the, a Japanese company culturally appropriating an Italian guy. 
if you care about those things, which you shouldn't, uh, it would be better just to say they made, they're making use or uh, raising awareness of other cultures. <laughs> Hmm. No real news, uh, though, about Mario Odyssey. Nothing new. Uh, apparently, I think Esquire is doing their first video game uh, review. Let me bring up that article because that was on my phone and not on my PC. Let me think. Too many different sources. It's still kind of difficult. No, Edge Magazine is doing their first video game uh, review, and they're giving Super Mario Odyssey a perfect score, which, that's an odd way to set a baseline, honestly. Uh, me think. If you were going to get into video game reviews, yeah. uh, maybe, I would recommend, maybe pick your fivest of your five games. Five out of ten. What is an exact average score from our website? Because then from that perspective you can uh, work in work your way to towards uh, what a 10, what is double an average game, and what a zero, which is uh, what is zero percent, I suppose, of an average game. Uh, and how how do those things break down? Hmm. Uh, last thing, really, though, we need is a established old media source getting into the video game reviewing business. We need new voices, not old voices that are just gonna spout the things and. I imagine that a significant reason why they're getting into video game reviews is just because they're losing uh, losing audience and this is their way of uh, of not losing all of their audience. And it also feels like they, they're probably getting paid to give it a perfect score. Hmm. The, they definitely are establishing themselves, though, as a, a site that is willing to give perfect scores, which, uh, which that's probably not great. There we go. Could kill this guy, <laughs> but there's no need to. Uh, this kind of relates because there's this site called Open Critic that you can make an account to, Once and you can even get. They have this nice calendar. I just put in my calendar that tells you when games come out, uh, so you can just import it into your. Uh, Google Calendar or your your Apple Calendar, iCal. I, I think both of those would work. Uh, and you can make a profile and then you can click on all the websites that are trusted that you want to trust and see reviews from. Now I think the phrase trusted is probably a little problematic because by the default options that there's definitely some some people there that I look at their articles but I don't trust them not for a second uh, so yeah but I was looking at that uh, particularly since open critic just announced that they're going to start adding to their synopsis of other reviewers the fact that um, that if a game has loot boxes or something like that that's going to be mentioned and and it's going to be up to the people 
Oops. Well, I guess we might be able to do this. Uh, actually, yeah, we've won. Let's pay attention. There we go. So I was looking at Open Critic thinking, could I put my YouTube channel in there and submit reviews? And the the answer is kind of no. The, because I don't do like 15 minute videos that recap and review everything. I don't have a numbering system. I don't really believe in them. Uh, and so they really don't have a way for me to convert my many many words and re uh, final thoughts over the credits of most games into a score it's something I've not been trying to do it's not something I want to do um, I don't think for a second on YouTube I would get more views if I if I put uh, Hearthstone review 5 out of 5 uh, as one video and I actually talked about Hearthstone or a more realistic game. Uh, man, there's a lot of games right out right now that I wish I was playing. Uh, I'm in very odd position. I'm, I'm playing old games, but there's some new games. I want to play that new Hat in Time game. Uh, it's too late now to stream. I want to play Cuphead. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a couple others. They've been mentioned and they've come and gone and I've already forgotten. So I guess I'm really just getting on the hype train. Let's see. So Mass Effect Andromeda is headed to Origin Access according to this piece of news. Uh, so if I'm recalling correctly, Origin Access is the one that you get to play the games uh, let's see here's origin access is a subscription based service that is five dollars US dollars a month provides unlimited access to a wide range of EA games generally they tend to be either older games or limited play first trials but Andromeda is neither it's the full game and it's still listed on origin at for forty dollars uh, the cost of eight months of access okay so they're they've we kind of already know they've completely abandoned any support for uh, for Mass Effect Andromeda it's been a, a colossal failure it's no Duke Nukem fail forever but it is a solid two I would say like I cannot for the life of me think of anything uh, as bad as the sales and release of that uh, of Mass Effect Andromeda that has happened recently let's go ahead now let's hold on to this actually and instead just play this I did spend some time last night watching a speed run from the ESA the European Speedrunners Association YouTube video uh, channel which is fun to watch uh, every now and then uh, and they were playing the bullet storm full clip edition game uh, and Uh, speed running through it and that game is actually very fa fascinating if they had come out as a free upgrade or even as a $20 game instead of the full price tag that Gearbox decided to put it as uh, I very well may have picked it up but they certainly are asking too much uh, to, to pay $60 for that new game uh, because it's it's really an unfinished product uh, it, it does doesn't immediately seem like it is but but the uh, there there's a function where if you don't kill enemies uh, 
if you don't kill enemies in an area before moving forward it, in Bullet Storm, it just kills you. And the story, while it, it is ridiculous and full of cussing, it also kind of implies to me that it's it's probably was going to be a different story to begin with. And they, they just kind of wrote something in haste. Uh, but the main thing that tells me Bullet Storm was an unfinished product. And it feels like it was, may have been a Gears of War style ripoff game originally as an idea. Is that I only remember like the first hour of gameplay and the speed run for Bullet Storm was three hours. And after the first hour, I'm thinking to myself, this game is almost done. This, this video can't be three hours long. Like, there's no more content here. And it turns out there actually is content, but the vast majority of Bulletstorm is walking from point A to point B in a linear path. And then, after about 45 minutes of walking down linear paths in different sections that are kind of spliced up together in random ways, but after about 45 minutes, you will get a real boss and fight that boss. There kind of is only like five in the whole game uh, that uh, uh, you fight a robotic dinosaur or you fight with a robotic dinosaur pretty early on in the game. You fight a giant plant. Um, there's a giant wheel that's attacking you on a train. Uh, and then that's kind of it. So major, major portions of of bullet storm is just forgettable so forgettable that an hour in yeah i'm watching somebody else play it and, and get all of the uh special shots that the, ga the game has all kinds of a scoring system for doing different types of shots with different types of guns which would be a cool add-on to any game but probably took way too much work uh and a lot of the secret shots in that game can only be done in one place. They, and you don't know what where that place is the first time. Uh, but yeah. Maybe I will get around to playing Bolt Storm, but I'm going to wait till it goes on chip on sale. James Anderson is on the chat. I have no idea what you mean by that like I have no idea what this comment is show Bobby's and Virginia uh, I think somebody is misspelling some dirty words here hmm. like in telling me to do things that would get me demonetized by YouTube hmm. I don't know if I talked about it, but Jim Sterling did put out a video saying YouTube has a YouTube problem, and that's about right. Uh, hmm. If you want some boobies, uh, uh, the Blade Runner 2049 gives you a couple if you sit through the two hours and 45 minutes of that movie honestly though even though that movie was is really long i was never bored in it it is slow paced like the original blade runner but it works and like it, it's no. it's actually a rather good movie uh so don't be afraid of the runtime go out there and check it out um, it's probably worth watching in the theaters uh, James Anderson says what you're talking about. I, I'm just trying to figure out. It says it's a meme Indian. Oh, uh, well, I don't do, uh, I don't do memes. Uh, and I don't also take other people's things off the internet and put it on my channel for no real no reason if I if I'm gonna start criticizing memes I, I would have to really give that some deep thought on how how to do that and six 
you know, intelligent and useful way. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. Player unknown has been battlegrounds has been rated an MA 15 plus in Australia, but for Australia, at least that means that player on them battlegrounds is actually going to uh, actually come out, and it's not just going to be completely refused rating and effectively banned. And then, how do we want to do this? How about we do this one, and then this one, and try that. Yep. I, I'd like more feedback on this open critic because I might be getting into a site more than likely it's, I'm getting into a site I'm never going to use again or even lo load the page up again but I might also be using or endorsing a site that's that's not actually credible as an aggregator of other video game critics I don't know how it could lose its credibility but uh, if there's a will there's a way So if anybody has any experiences or anything I should know about, let me know. Uh, James Anderson, do you need help with a quest? I uh, we, we could speed up victories, certainly, if you want to log on the United States account and and just let me win rather quick as quickly as possible. That's that's the quest I'm working on right now. Let's see this one can't attack so if I do this it'll destroy this one and power this guy up do this and this and then the turn hmm. just a tiny bit of news left there's a game called Hanjuku Hero AA Senkai Hanjuku Kuneri uh, a exclamation point coming out for smartphones in Japan on October 19th. It looks pretty low graphics, but it is a smartphone game. That is a long name. Again, probably also a pointless, uh, pointless thing to mention as a piece of news, but might as well. Let's see. I thought my music was playing. It is. It's just it's playing a very long five minute song. And that's why it didn't move forward yet. Like I don't know why the music wasn't working the last time. It's really it was probably just the website wasn't working. Let's see there's a Idadaki ITA DAKI Street colon Dragon Quest and Final Fantasy 30th anniversary demo out there. What is this game? Uh, I believe this is probably something like uh, Mario Party, except for with Japanese characters uh, instead of Mario characters. In that turn, it's coming out for the PlayStation 4 and the Vita. Hmm. Oh, it's already out, so. Mm, yeah, the Japanese sometimes put out demos for games that are already out, which is. which is kind of unhelpful. I wish this game would come over to the West. Taiko Drum Master. T A I K O Drum Master. Drum Session. It has is the latest one in this game series, and uh, uh, it's a game where you keep the beat playing, uh, beating on the drum, 
and uh, it's kind of like Dance Dance Revolution or other, other musical beat games, but uh, a little bit like Donkey Konga too, uh, but it never comes out in the West. It's just it's PlayStation Four through the PS uh, PlayStation Store. Hmm. Yeah, so I need some Pals and a Warrior victory. So if you want to friend me, uh, send me a friend request, James Anderson, right now, and let me win two games. We can speed this up. But if you don't, I'll just go back into regular playing. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's a shame that the Taiko Drum Master series doesn't come over. And I'm to the Humble Store, which tells me that I have run out of news. Let's see, there's a new Endless RPG Lands bundle. So, pay what you want for Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition. That's a pretty good deal if you don't have Borderlands 2. Go pay a dollar and get the Steam key for that. And on top of that, you'll get the incredible adventure of Van Helsing Final Cut and a game called Warm Unlimited. Uh, the Humble Store is now telling average play times for these games. Hmm. James Anderson, great deck you crafted. Thanks. If you want to help me, send me a friend request. Otherwise, like I said, uh, there's... The deck I was just playing, by the way, was is really just... I deleted you? Are you on the America's account? I... I, I don't think I did. But I might have. If if you haven't been online for more than a month like this, I, I may have deleted you on accident. Like that... Some... Sometimes happens. I guess I'm gonna stop doing that. But I, I was doing that for a while. So if you want to send me a friend request if it has if that's how it goes I'm playing tavern okay fine whatever then I will move on I actually have other tavern brawls I have to get done on the other accounts come to think of it so let's instead of doing just the America's account let's switch over and go over to the European account. Are you gonna let me launch? Uh, no, because the game is crashed. Let's try that again. Restart the Blizzard app. If you pay more then the average on this new Humble store, you get Endless Legend Classic Edition. Never heard of it, but it's an average of 26 hours of play. If you get, and it gives you all the Borderland 2 DLC, uh, which is an average playtime of 60 hours. So, Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition is 30 hours. All the DLC is 60 hours. You're, you're talking 90 hours of gameplay right there. And Guild of Dungeoneering, which is an average of uh, of about 10 hours. Come on, Blizzard. Am I going to have to use the Task Manager? I think I am. Let's see. Hmm. What's it doing? I see what it's doing. It's trying to update. And I'm not lighting it because my firewall's blocking it. So, yeah, the latest Humble Bundle. Very helpful. Uh, I'm helping on an Asian account, man. Alright, well... Now I've got Hearthstone back, I'll switch over to an Asian account. That that would be fine. That's crazy. You do appears appear on my friend list. Hmm. Yeah. I imagine it's just uh what server I was 
on, or it was my uh, firewall Welcome messing things up. So yeah, I'd highly recommend anybody that doesn't have Borderlands to begin with right now. Borderlands 2, particularly, and Borderlands pre-sequel. Go spend $10 and get the pre-sequel for $5. Uh, let's see. I, I'm on the Asian account, and it says you're not online. D V L O N L G N G. Ah, uh, let's see what do we have anything we can trade here? Trade this fifty. It becomes a forty, we'll trade that again. We need seven victories and five of the paladin or priest. So what can we play with the paladin and the pri priest? Um I think we could probably make a pretty amazing uh, deck. Let's see, heal. If we've got the cards. Hmm. hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm actually missing so missing the cards I'm I was looking for, but you know, this might still work. Let's try. Uh, so now I'm back to my Twitter as far as news, and let's see if we if anything new has happened on Twitter. Hmm. The Tales Principle has released a vinyl record for those obsessed with the Tales Principle. I feel like Crow Team, the makers of the Tales Principle, are a little too obsessed about their own game. It was a good game, but let's be realistic here. And it didn't didn't even make Game of the Year the year it came out for most people. It's not going to. Uh, It's not going to to grow in the hearts and minds of people who didn't play it. So it'll have a slow, slow cult following. Certainly, it deserves that much, but that's about all you can do with it. They should just move on to the next game or the sequel. Hmm. Just take Doomsayer. So ideally I would want to save this guy and see if I can just constantly uh, constantly get more double minions health. Let's see. <laughs> Apparently the creators of Titanfall are making a realistic VR war game. Which I am not sure what that means. Honestly, that could mean a lot of different things. Side effects. Right away. No. Trust me. Hmm. Like I think the way the friends list works is you, you have to be on the same server, friend somebody, and then uh Send him, I suppose, the friend again. Let's see, are we ready for this? I think we are. Right away. Hmm. I'm looking at a cooler master case right now. I think 
I'm I'm probably a little overdue for getting a newer, fancier case with more cooling, but it's gotta be quiet too. Hmm. Apparently there's a new game called Unworthy. Let's see if we have any real details about that. Hmm. I'll take this card. That way we can play this. Right away. Hmm. So if I double his health to to 10, then double it again to 20, I can do 20 of 28 damage. He devolved it right into a vicious fledgling. I guess I don't have anything to say about Harvey Weinstein. It's, uh, these are things that I think people have known about and not been able to or simply not wanted to fix or deal with for a long time. Uh, Wind Fury. Hit it again. Plus three health. And then see if you can kill this guy now. Hmm. Hold on to this. And attack. Hmm. I will say the Blade Runner soundtrack was big and pompous, but being in the theater, there was like a 11 dot one surround sounds theater. I just didn't get a real good surround sound feel on it. That being said, I was on the edge, and I should have been in the middle of the theater. Is Definitely. The end is coming! Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what Japanese devs are saying about the recent Tokyo Game Show. Be interesting. YouTube is doing a girls day. I don't know if it really is girls day or not. YouTube creators, YouTube, uh, Twitter in particular. Like, like if today is girls day, there must, they must have gotten down to the point where there's a girls day, a mother's day, a daughter's day, a sister's day. Like, I, either I am missing something here or that there's at least three different days around females uh, that are happening and I, I have this feeling that all the push to get girls into stem stuff like science technology engineering and mathematics is is almost a coin flip and 18 years from now we're gonna find that it really did nothing to increase the number of females working in that industry or or conversely and more, probably more likely we encourage a bunch of females into that industry and that industry simply doesn't exist that was certainly the case when I was a kid they were pushing everybody of both genders into computers and programming and all of that and there really aren't that many e programming and computer jobs out there. Everybody isn't a programmer, certainly. Everybody does use PCs, but they don't didn't need as much of an education in it as they were pushed into. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't gonna work. Uh, let's see what this realistic uh, war game looks like. This will be funny if I look at this trailer and I go, wow, that is realistic. <laughs> it's like, I don't think I particularly want to see realistic war footage. Well, okay, now I'm seeing old war, war footage. Propaganda footage. Uh, So this 
isn't really a trailer so much as it is. Hmm. I guess what they're really saying here is we're making a game like Titanfall, but it's not going to have Titanfall in it. Uh, uh, it's not going to be a futuristic game. It's going to be something more like Call of Duty. And honestly, I don't see a reason why you would want to do that. Like, why compete with something that's already established instead of go the route that has already been established that has gotten you some popularity. Uh, Titanfall 2 really wasn't a failure because of the game that was developed. It was a failure because it was released at the wrong time. Uh, well, that didn't work. Uh, I guess I'm going to call it now. We've We've got like one more piece of news I found to talk about, one or two, and we have gone two 45 minute long episodes, and I need to come back and last play, just, I'm going to friend anybody, yeah, actually, if, if James Anderson w was going to help me, let me know in the chat. Otherwise, I think we're going to wrap up this stream, uh, and he may end up helping me off stream, but um, as far as things to actually talk about, hop in the chat now if you have any questions or comments. Maybe I can spin that off and do another episode, but right now it's feeling like it's we're going to run out of things to talk about, and I'm, I'm more and more thinking the right move when you run out of things to talk uh, talk about is just to wrap up. Uh, this game called Brutal... Uh, no, the, the game is brutal. It's called Unworthy. Uh, it doesn't allow you to jump. Like, that's... I mean, that is something, but it's not... There's plenty of other games out there from the, the old days. The old Atari games that didn't allow you to jump. Uh, it's kind of got this black and white aesthetic and it it's trying to go for something like Dark Souls but 8-bit graphics and you're just really seeing the silhouette of your character and, and you're rolling and parrying and you can climb up ladders and it seems to be vertical platforming more than you would think uh, but is someone injured? Yeah, there's a life bar, there's a stamina bar, there's potions. Yeah, I don't think that's... That, that might get a little bit of coverage, but not a lot. I don't know what's going on here, but... There is... Every time I draw a card, it's just destroying the card. So, my strategy... Okay, so now James Anderson is beating, baiting me into political conversations. Uh, do you think Trump should help Puerto Rico? This is actually a very easy question. That, if, but, but I know you're trying to bait me into political thing. Yes. Trump should help Puerto Rico. Trump, as a human being who has power and ability, should help everybody he can. As in every other human being should use their power and ability to help everybody you can. The idea, the concept of, of blaming a victim or letting, letting a human being fail starve to death, uh, go homeless, suffer, is morally wrong in my book. If you have the ability to help, you should help. It has nothing whatsoever to do with who you are or what you believe. I think all humans in general should help if they can. They should try. Let's see. Is 
And then he said they made a fundraising raiser to restore the country. Uh, as far as giving the charities and, and your way of helping, uh, do your research, put a little effort into it. You would feel very badly if you ended up going, giving to a fundraiser that just stole your money or did not uh, even attempt to accomplish its goals. Uh, but yes, people should give to... Uh, people should research the fundraiser and give it. And then James Anderson comes back. But they didn't vote for Trump. And it's a country that doesn't have votes that are countable. Well, that that's only an argument that should sway a corrupt politician. It shouldn't sway a, any human being with morals. Uh, if Puerto Rico was completely separate, uh, like... The exact same question could be asked for Mexico. Mexico is a completely uh, separate country that didn't vote for Trump, and their votes in Mexico don't count towards Trump. Doesn't matter. He's he has a moral imperative, I would argue, as all humans be beings do, to help other human beings. Uh, there should be no borders. There should be no politics in doing the right thing. The right thing is always the right thing, and it should always be striven, strove for. You should always try to do it. Uh, so, yes, Trump should help Puerto Rico. Trump should help Mexico. Trump should help Africa, Australia, uh, the Middle East. Uh, if we can really help them, and if we really are going to try to help them, then uh, a lot of times we end up more protecting corporate interests and causing more trouble. But if we can try to help, we should ha try to help. Yeah, what is this? Oh, this is the card that they're destroying my deck with. Are they trying to make me run out of cards? Does it even work that way? The hmm. Deal 5 damage. Hmm. Let's see, what's this article? What are the Japanese devs saying about the recent Tokyo Game Show? The Nato Oshima Naoto Oshima uh, he's best known for making the character design and artist for Sonic the Hedgehog he says I feel there's nothing new or and challenging being made in Japan I got the feeling that the only games with strong existing IP and characters were being shown um and is, is this really just an interview of a few different people? I think it may be. The end is coming! Uh, Hidedake Sweri Suhiro Sweri uh, Buddhist monk and, and developer of Deadly Premonition. What did he say? There were bigger booths and wider aisles compared to last year. It gave me the feeling that there might be fewer exhibitors this year than last year. Uh, right? He's making life is good right now. Katario Yoshimura. Uh, let's see. She is a pioneer work. She was the co-founder of Technosoft making the Thunder Force series and made some of the earliest 3D PC games. Let's see. The end is coming. Hmm. Let's see. 
And she said, last year, the number of people who wanted something that was interesting as a proper game, not just by charging in gotcha, became too large for game makers to ignore. Gacha. I wonder what gacha means. G A T C H A. Let's Google that word. Basically, gambling. Okay. So she's saying that people got tired of the gambling games and instead are. are focusing more on the... Uh, I've lost here. Let's see what else. Who else? We have one called Yoshima? M Yoshimura? Wait, was that the same person? Yeah, that is. Uh, she says... In the indie section, I saw strong, strange, interesting games with variable budgets scattered about, so maybe the future of Japanese games will be visible to me after all in a form of uh, enthusiastic indies. So no AAA games really being shown at the Tokyo Game Show. I feel that the Tokyo Game Show really just kind of suffers in general. Uh, it may just be on the way out. I think all game shows may may be on the way out. Uh, let's see. And we'll just keep sending friend requests. Somebody did accept me, but they're not online. We're just going to keep doing this until, until there's more people. I'll probably do this in the European accounts too. Is just try to build up more people that are actually playing. Uh, here we have Tak Fuji. Uh, is he's best known for his extreme presentation of Konami's invite. Says Dilong, uh, I'm right here. You wanna you wanna give me a friendly challenge? Send me a friendly challenge. Uh, help me with the tavern brawl. That would be the most helpful. Like, I need a paladin or a priest. Five victories there and seven victories there. But I don't, I don't know if we're going to do all of that on screen. So, Tak Fuji is known for his extreme presentation for Konami's 99 Nights. 99 Nights is pretty cool game. He's best known in the West for... He had important roles in Pro Evolution Sonic, Soccer and Winning Eleven series. And what does he say? I'm just looking at the, the quotes. Real life is tough, but imaginary games worlds can create, provides, uh, we create can provide some little help to be motivating. Motivated for tomorrow. Hmm. And that's all the quotes. <laughs> so they interviewed like three, maybe four people about the Tokyo Game Show and those are the big quotes. There are more here on Gametsu if you really care to get the full interviews, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, seems like Tokyo Game Show. I don't think it ever really was big too, so I think there also is a misunderstanding of just how big Tokyo Game Show ever was. Here's a new story. Zynga is going to shut down its office in Oxford, uh, which was the location it acquired when it bought the UK game company um, uh, Natural Motion. So that's not it. Here we have uh, Sarge, one of the programmers for Minecraft, saying Chuck Norris can publish videos on YouTube without being demonetized. There, there is speculation that if you get demonetized too much, you will simply, uh, you will, you will get down to the point where you are, uh, 
blacklisted just by default. And that may just be the blind box way of of the AI doing it and Google not even knowing what the AI is doing. Uh, so if a lot of your videos getting demonetized, it feels like uh, that is... Hmm. Uh, I would seriously change your titles and your tags if you're getting nerfed a lot. Uh, I I keep being on the other side of this these conversations with with YouTube. Honestly, yeah, I have probably about a hundred out of my five thousand videos have been demonetized, uh, but every single one that was demonetized kind of makes sense. They either have thumbnails that are suggestive. They either have mature audience only as part of the title because I put it there. Uh, I don't know if this is really... If it's not suitable for most advertisers because I don't know what their standards really mean. Uh, I can't... I can't challenge the demonetization anyways unless these videos got a thousand li views and... If people think they should be monetized, they can look on that look for that playlist on on my uh, YouTube channel that says "not advertiser friendly videos" or something like that. And you can watch all those videos and see which ones it is. But you know, I really don't disagree with any of their choices. It's not like my Wheels on the Bus music video that I made for for preschool kids was demonetized. Okay, your internet seems to be bad, or you canceled the challenge, or something. Should babies eat fried chicken is where we're going to end this. Um, not a lot. Sat saturated fat is probably not the best food for a baby. Uh, it's not going to Im like hurt them if they eat it once in a while, I imagine. But everything in moderation, and and they probably could choke very easily on bones and just fried bits. And hmm. Anduin versus Jaina. You asked like, for it. And see, he said he victory. he's saying he got disconnected, so. We already know he's disconnected. I'm gonna hit this and see what happens. Like, I'm playing against the ghost right now. So we'll just see what happens. Honestly, babies probably should eat baby food, always. Uh, and you should try to keep their diet very good and very healthy for their first years. Uh, their first dozen or so years so that they learn good eating habits and that and that they have a variety of foods that they're willing to eat uh, so I would probably say stick to baby food don't let your baby choke don't give them something they're not ready to eat uh, if you're talking actual babies if you're talking toddlers and and little kids fried chicken once every four or five months probably wouldn't be terrible once a week too much like that's that's not putting them down the path of being healthy and frankly even adults probably shouldn't be eating fried chicken more than once every three or four months And apparently there's a kid in the Evil Within 2 with a melted face. Let's see, does that count? Um, no it didn't count.
James Anderson for your last statement as I'm about to wrap up. Okay, so what if a chicken eats dog food? Well, chicken probably shouldn't eat the high protein uh, content that is in dog food. Since chickens should be eating corn and grains for the most part. Uh, it's probably going to be fine. It's not like chickens live that long anyways. But uh, you, in general, shouldn't feed food that is not part of the healthy appropriate diet to any any kind of creature uh, and so yeah feed people feed animals the things they should eat so I have to get two hopefully two quests done here and a tavern brawl uh, uh, but done on the Asian account and I think I have two daily quests on the European account and the tavern brawl to do there. So there's a lot of work to do left here. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll try to play James Anderson off screen too. We've gone long enough as far as the stream and, and I have nothing more to talk about. And James Anderson is just going to ask me silly troll questions. So that's going to be it for this recording and this stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on basically any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.